You're listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Greetings, Explorers. Uh, Welcome to a new Week in Geek where we check in to see what we're geeking out on. Um, And this could be TV, movies, music, books, you name it. Whatever it is, we're geeking out on it. So uh, who would like to kick it off? Uh, yeah, I've been consuming a lot of geeky material this week. Let's see. Uh, I've been watching Book of Boba Fett, which despite some of the haters, I think it's a fantastic show. Uh, I've been consuming Peacemaker, the show, which is a spinoff of The Suicide Squad, which I thought was fantastic. And I've been doing a replay of the Mass Effect uh, trilogy, uh, the legendary series on my Xbox. So that's been taking up most of my time when I'm neglecting my children. I mean, watching my children. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you like about uh, Book of Boba Fett? Because because uh, my problem with it has been the best episode was the one without Boba Fett. Well, that's a, a really strong episode and props to Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, who previously directed a few episodes of The Mandalorian as well. Uh, I just I really enjoy it. I think it's an interesting journey of how Boba Fett has transformed himself from this, uh, you know, selfish bounty hunter to uh, someone who's really trying to, you know, take a different path in his life. And honestly, I don't think it's totally different from who the inherent character is, you know, going back to Django. If you, if you watch the original prequels, I mean, Django, yeah, he he took money to become a clone use his DNA to be to create clones, but he also wanted a special clone just for himself so he could raise a child. I mean, he voluntarily wanted to become a single dad uh, for a reason. Oh, and you know, I never thought of that. So he's he's a very complex character. You know, Django might have been a mercenary bounty hunter, but he wanted to have a family and he wanted to settle down. And if you watch the Clone War series, you can see aspects of these characters where they're not just soldiers. I mean, they're all from the DNA template. And they're all expected to be clone soldiers, but they all have complex personalities and and needs and desires. And so I think this really fleshes out the character. Yeah, it, he's not a silent cowboy like he was in the movies, but honestly, he wasn't in the movies that long. So for yeah. people to assume that he's always going to be this, you know, man with no name I, sort of thing is, I, I don't think, right. My problem hasn't been so much characters, just the plotting of the show is really slow. Oh, absolutely. Really, really slow. I, I think it's more of a character-driven show than a plot-driven one, and uh, it, it definitely is slower, but I, I like it. I love what they're doing with uh, the Tusken Raiders and how they've really created more of a culture for them, building upon what they did in the Mandalorian show and kind of showing them as the indigenous people of Tatooine and uh, kind of giving them some more is- interesting aspects to their uh their culture than you know the previous movies have provided them so yeah I, i'm really enjoying it and what about you aubrey what's your uh your week in geek been like oh so i'm watching a couple shows i'm watching another korean drama last time we had week in geek we talked about king's affection from a list that my friend gave me I'm watching another one from that list which is called i hear your voice it's a 2013 korean drama um that is about a lawyer who ends up teaming up with someone who can hear people's thoughts. Um, oh. That's a quick sort of summary. I'm only in episode four, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. And it's very. It's got a lot of the same tropes that I'm finding in Korean dramas, which is stuff like the characters in the series always have met each other like in their past and then it'll be a number of episodes before they remember like, oh yeah, you're that little boy I saw at the park or like stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's a fun one. I'm I'm enjoying that one. It's very dramatic and the characters are very over the top. Um, I also started watching talk show, the game show, which was a 2017 series that, uh, on true TV that only lasted two seasons, but it is hilarious. And if you like comedy, it has a ton of good comics and improv people on there. It's, they basically took the format of a talk show and then turned it into a game show so like you get points every time you name drop every time you plug your project (laughs) every time you humble brag everything (laughs) like that and they and it's very like fast-paced and they yell at you if you do things wrong and it's super funny that's a super fun show um and 
game-wise, I'm playing the DLC for Breath of the Wild. I finally, after two years, finished Breath of the Wild and was really sad about it and then realized that there's DLC. So I'm now playing the bonus downloadable content for Breath of the Wild. Um, That's a Zelda game, yeah, right? Yeah, not much to say about yeah. that. It's a lot of cool... Yeah, it's a, it's like a... It's a very unique Zelda game in that it's the first Zelda game that feels open world. It's like Skyrim meets Zelda. It's mm. super different than all other Zelda games. Um, but it's really fun. And then I'm reading In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts by Dr. Gabor Mate. Hopefully I said his name right. I'm not very far into it, but um, he is a doctor who studies addiction and works with people who struggle with addiction and his book is supposed to be very groundbreaking in terms of painting people with addiction as people, like as humans, and exploring all the reasons that people get addicted and how it's not as simple as like, it's just brain chemicals and all the things that drive people to addiction and what keeps them trapped there. And a lot of people have said, like, he saved me from addiction. Like, I read his book about why I was addicted and now I'm not addicted because I was like, oh, no one ever talked to me like this before. <laughs> and um also a really useful book for parents who have lost kids to addiction too of being like oh i understand like what my son was going through now so that's a it's a very cool book so far very interesting very sad very interesting oh were you uh watching your korean dramas is that netflix where oh no um it's on viki v-i-k-i um i think you can just sign up for a free account but my friend is letting me I mean, my friend and I live together, so we are a household, <laughs> and she's sharing her login with me because we live in the same house. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just asked because I noticed while looking through different things that Netflix has a surprisingly rich catalog of foreign material. It's just not very easy to find. They have the worst discovery mechanism available but i mean you can find anything from i was looking for thai horror movies and there are a few thai horror movies on there it's just you have to know what you're looking for and it's algorithmic because as soon as i started watching korea korean dramas on netflix suddenly it's like constantly recommending korean mm. movies and shows to oh. me so netflix is spying on you well it is <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Netflix, yeah. uh, I've been watching uh, The Woman in the House Across the Street from The Girl in the Window. It is both dumb and hilarious and intriguing at the same time. Uh, it's about... Is this literally you're watching this outside your house? Or is this a really <laughs> long show title? I'm just telling you guys what I like to do. Uh, no, it's a Netflix show starring... <laughs> uh, I forget the actress's name. She was in uh, Veronica Mars and uh, The Good Place. Whatever. Her oh, name is. she's she's Kristen married to that Dax Shepard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Kristen Bell. Yeah. Kristen Bell. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's called uh, her new Netflix show is called The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window, and it's a it's a it's a parody ish of the uh, murder mystery where she's a widow or she's grieving something like that, and then. Uh, something is going on across the street and she's the only one that can figure it out. Um, but there's a lot of uh, wordplay and just just dumb stuff that happens, but they do it so well, uh, you know, tongue in cheek. It's it's great. I highly recommend it. Um, both uh, my girlfriend and I enjoyed watching it. Her for the murder mystery stuff and me just for the, the dumb parts of it. Um, really loved it. And then I've been reading uh, Monk by uh, Yusef Dadudi. It's uh, a biography, graphic novel about Thelonious Monk mm. and his benefactor, uh, I'm going to butcher her name, Pananoka, Pananochia de Konings Raider. <laughs> she was a wealthy European who, uh, who kind of went against her family's um, wishes, I guess, for lack of a better term. And really got heavily involved in the jazz scene, the American jazz scene. And because she was financially well off, she wound up uh, being a benefactor for a lot of different jazz musicians. I, I believe when um, Bird died, she paid for his funeral. And then when Thelonious Monk uh, sort of went into, um, 
isolation later in his life. She, he lived with her pretty much up until he died. He, I believe he died in her house and um, other, other jazz, all the jazz greats one way or another, I think crossed her path um, either as uh, you know, a fan or she became friends with them or was a benefactor in one way or another. So it's really beautifully drawn, well-told story. It's really, it kind of flashes back and forth at different points in both of their lives. Um, and then you just kind of get to see Thelonious Monk at the end of his life, how kind of had some uh, interesting theories about things, but uh, it's, it's a really good read. I highly recommend it. Um, definitely check it out. And then I've been listening to Angel Olsen, and uh, I, I went through a spell a couple years ago. I got really into Angel Olsen. And then I kind of stopped listening to her for a little while, and I've gotten back into her again. In fact, I bought two of her more recent albums. And then this young, younger, younger than me anyways, uh, Australian singer named Julia Jacqueline. I've been uh, listening to her like crazy lately. She's got this great song called Pool Party um, that I really enjoy. So that's, that's, that's been my week in geek. Oh, I forgot to add, uh, because I missed the first episode, um, that week that we recorded the first episode, I binged all of Station Eleven, which was on HBO Max. I uh, highly recommend the show, although it has kind of a dark topic. It starts off with I, basically 99% of the world dies from a super flu. Uh, it was based on a book uh, that came out well before COVID. They started filming before COVID, but then had to stop because of COVID and then had oh. to finish up during COVID. So a little surreal meta, uh, you know, uh, life imitates art sort of thing. But it's an amazing story. It, it it does seem like it's a tough topic to watch, but it's honestly a beautiful story. Uh, lots of um, custom folk music they created for the, the series itself, as well as some uh, pop culture tunes. And it's just really powerful. And in uh, the central aspect of the story involves a graphic novel that ex uh, inspires it's a fictional graphic novel within the universe that inspires two of the main characters and uh i just i had i hadn't cried during a show as much as i had uh this one so i highly recommend wow. it if you feel like you're you're prepared to watch basically the the story of a super flu taking out most of the world which i understand is a little too close to home but amazing beautiful story that i definitely find some time to watch it if you can cool all right. Thanks for the recommendation. Well, since you mentioned since you mentioned music, Johnny, I just wanted to put it out there that I'm listening to Neil Young and Joni Mitchell on Apple Music specifically. <laughs> that's it. Not Spotify. <laughs> Can I just say that, right. that, that, that that's only annoyed me only because I never use Spotify. And then I thought, OK, this will be the year I use Spotify because everyone does that. Um, that music wrap up at the end of the year and I was always left out so I said okay I'm going to commit I ported over <laughs> like my playlists from Apple uh, from Apple Music and Amazon uh, Music and then suddenly they got uh, what is it Milkshake Ducked and now <laughs> I uh, now I, I can't use my Spotify so anyway <laughs> <laughs> alright well that's been our week I'm sorry geek. for your loss <laughs> yeah yeah sorry Dennis We'll mourn. We'll pour one out for your Spotify list. But, I was saying uh, I was the first one who didn't use Spotify. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hipster. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening. That's been our, uh, should we try to harmonize it on the way out? <laughs> That's been our. Uh, yep. We can <laughs> geek. We can geek. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening uh we'll be back in a week with a regular episode bye adios bye we, we can, can.